welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. It's done completely by amateurs, um, and it's just a way to use our imaginations to create something. So this episode uh, is one I've been looking forward to for a while. It's focused around something you might have heard of called Batman. For this special episode, I've brought in two guests for the very first time. Um, hello, guests. Why don't you uh, introduce yourselves? Hey. I'm Nathan Kay. I'm Craig Lewis. And we're from Fairpoint Podcast. You fellas do a couple of podcasts, right? Why don't you tell us about those? We do. Uh, as Craig said, we do a podcast called Fairpoint Podcast. Together, we've been doing that one for about four years now. It uh, covers a wide variety of topics. Yeah, uh, we also script material and put stories in the end of our a lot of our episodes post-50. Post episode fifty. Yeah, I know radio. Radio plays have been getting popular. So ah, radio play. Shit. I keep forgetting <laughs> what to call them. <laughs> radio you also, plays perfect. I think you reached out to me originally because you listened to the Pokemon podcast we do called Silph Radio S I L P H. Correct. Yes, longtime fan of that podcast. I love um, uh, kind of intellectual, like uh, transcending the game discussion of of Pokemon because a lot of podcasts are like too about the math and about like the odds and the specific attacks and all that stuff they're like too nerdy yeah. of pokemon podcasts <laughs> i'm the kind of like nerd slash geek that likes to like imagine what the world is like instead of dealing with the numbers and the the math of it Clearly. so i like to hear a podcast that's more more like i don't know academic or more discussion based instead of just most... uh discovering ivs yeah, exactly. Like, I don't really care about uh, the nitty gritty of the game. Like, I don't necessarily beat all the Pokemon games. I'm not about collecting the Pokedex. I'm about the lore and like the character designs and the inspirations for the the series and stuff like that. Oh, me too. I think video game podcasts in general. Video games are one of the most popular topics for podcasts, and almost every video game podcast, though. And I'm not pointing fingers. There's a ton that I like, but so many of them are just. Like you said, just dry, just about the gaming or about news. I don't care about news. I want to be able to listen to your entire backlog it's, four years. It's from cool now. to be able to get the one of the game directors on your podcast and Interviews talk to them about cool. that. Interviews are cool, and but I, what I really want to see is more things like you're saying that are focused on the story of games, the world of games, immersion in the games themselves. A specific piece of software makes you feel something like that's amazing, and that's the part you take away from it. It's not about the math or like how the thing actually works. What really matters is the way it makes you feel and the, the kind of human connection that video games can make. Absolutely, and that's proof right there that video games are, in fact, art. Amen. My podcast is, like, totally amateur, um, meaning that all the guests are not at all professional designers. I've started doing a new thing where I, like, ask everyone what their profession is as part of their intro. I'm mostly just looking for industries just to kind of, like, encourage people to you know, dream big or whatever, like try to do stuff that you like, not just things you're qualified for. You can do a podcast about theme park design. If you've never designed a theme park before, you just kind of go for it. And yeah, just being open-minded, I guess you can get unexpected rewards. So what do you guys do professionally? I already talked about how I'm a math teacher. What do you guys do? Um, I work in management. Ooh, management, management of, of like humans. It is a waffle restaurant that also is a uh, venue it's a music venue. It's called Funk and Waffles. Music, spoken word, poetry, uh, yeah, puppet they, shows. We went to see an adult was, puppet show there once. It was what? awesome. Yeah, it was comedy. Wow. So they do. Uh, they have comedy nights. They have music. They have open mics. Is this a chain or just no, like no, a no? No, no, no. It's one guy that went to Syracuse University with his buddy. They started it up. There's now two in the Syracuse location in the Syracuse area. Oh, that's that's awesome. And it, you guys live in Syracuse, New York. Yes. Right? Yeah. It, it's called Funkin Waffles awesome. and you don't have to edit Funkin that waffles. one. It's Funkin Waffles. Yeah, it's Funk been on and Waffles. Uh Diners, Drive-ins and Dives. So Really? Yeah. The, that's really cool. I'll track down that episode. That's legit. Uh Nathan, what do you do for a living? I work in retail. Uh I work for a big chain, so I'm not going to be as specific, but it, yeah. I like it. I love retail. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I worked in retail for like several years after college. It's it's a good time. I like selling stuff is cool. Like inventory is a good time and customer service is you know, it's just a social experience that you're getting paid for. Like Yeah. I mean it's not for everybody, so but if you're like hard working, charismatic and charming like me, like it's mm -hmm. totally hey. great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's my boy over here. I do have a question about our podcast that we're gonna be doing. Uh I'm so ready. Yeah, is it a 
all ages podcast explicit. Uh, I got we got to watch your mouse, right? G <laughs> golly that's instead true. of and gosh darns, right? Right. It is um, all ages, but I I'm also um, kind of curious about censoring, like trying new censorship sound effects. So oh, okay. I mean, it's not a big deal if a couple like slip out, but we'll do our best. Uh, I'm gonna make I sure would, I, yeah. I try to say flipping instead of the other. I'm yeah, the biggest defender good. of that because I say the f word like every two sentences. You do you really? Don't. I mean, you don't say it that much on your podcast, though. I okay. mean, I yeah, it's not eh. like offensive. You, it's like one of those things you don't really notice it until you look for it. <laughs> True, that's a good point. <laughs> Once you're editing, you'll be like, "This f- dude." <laughs> <laughs> now I'm saying it. <laughs> Do you have an idea for like the overall structure of how you want this theme park to be laid out? Because I think that's like the most important like foundation. Well, in the back of my mind, I always kind of thought it would look like Gotham. Yes. That was my idea was that this is the theme park's called like Gotham City, Gotham Park or something. You got to be more creative, Nathan. Yeah, DC won't let it fly without the branding (laughs) of Batman in there. But like like Gotham, Batman's world or something. I was thinking the same thing. Gotham City is like the most logical way to do that because it's the setting of most of the classic like Batman iterations that have happened so far. Um, but one thing I was thinking of is there's all these different like versions of Batman. Like there's like the whole multiverse of different Batmen that have existed throughout these different timelines and stuff. Ben Affleck, Val Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even just that within the movies. Uh, yeah, there's so was... many different Batman universes. So I was thinking it'd be kind of cool to like mush them all together because I think it's if you pick one and we're like, okay, uh, we're going with like just the Val Kilmer Batman throughout the whole park. (laughs) That's probably not going to be everyone's favorite Batman. Everyone has their their own favorite, you know. So what if we like had it so it's kind of like a crossroads of different timelines somehow, like we set it up like there's a story where each like quadrant of the park is a different version of Gotham city from like a different Batman timeline. Or is that confusing? Is that too much? Uh, I mean, it's definitely not too much for Batman fans. I believe, I think they would love the fact that each separate section of the park would be its own little different type of Batman universe, whether it be like the golden age Batman or the current Batman or even like earth 405 Batman. That's, that's definitely a cool idea. I think the way I was imagining, was more of a uh, finding the common ground between them and depicting them. But I also ran into while I was brainstorming ideas, you know, I didn't think too hard. I just made like a little bullet point list of quick ideas uh, was that, well, wait, well, if Harley Quinn's going to be here in this attraction, then how is she going to be there in that attraction? I'm like, stop overthinking it. It's a theme park. So Uh, (laughs) I think there's six goofies walking around Disneyland right now. (laughs) Shut up. Nathan. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. And I do think for, for whenever you're designing any kind of project, doing too much like work on your own kind of detracts from the process of like collaborating and building it as, you know, a teamwork thing. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't, didn't write down too many ideas or anything earlier, but there's just, if it's based on one character, I feel like that character is going to be everywhere. You know, there's going to be so many people with like the little pointy ears on top of their heads and like different color suits. And that's okay. Like they can all exist within the same universe. Have you ever read um, Batman, I think it's called No Man's Land. It was a comic book series about where Gotham City gets, like, segmented. I haven't finished it. I've read, like, the first three. It's huge. I haven't read the whole thing either, but the general idea of, like, Batman No Man's Land is, like, Gotham City has been divided into, like, different gang territories, and each of those is run by one of the, like, famous DC villains. So it's like the city is chopped up into smaller bits. Like So there's, like, 
Oh, go ahead. If you've seen the newest Christopher Nolan one, newest, but it's almost 10 years old now. But wow. Dark Knight Rises, that's where they drew the idea where like the government sort of walled off Gotham and stopped. And we're like, we're done with Gotham. It's kind of like that idea. And the villains took it's over. It's like quarantined. Yeah, that's, so just... that's exactly it. So that might be a way to um, kind of segment it up. But then if you go into like the Riddler quadrant, there's going to be like the little kid Riddler, like the Arkham City, like scary Riddler. You know what I mean? So then it, that gets a little bit confusing as well. Well, I mean, I think spread the... it out. Spread it out across the park. Yeah. Like I had an idea, for example, the first idea I had for this was I want an Arkham Asylum themed haunted house. You go in. Yes. Oh, no when... way, dude. I did too. I came up with the same thing. Ah. Virtual high five. <laughs> so my idea was... You walk in and it's like, at first you're just like, you're all interns coming or something. And maybe they're talking to you like your interns, like, look, you're going to be doing your internship. You go back, you get your college credits, blah, blah, blah. And then something (laughs) happens and all the uh, inmates escape. And now it's like a haunted house and you just have to go through it and get out. Go through the maze and reach the end. And at some point you'll like run across some scared doctors that get dragged away by the Yeah. There's like a section that Poison Ivy has overgrown with foliage. There's like the Mad Hatter's Alice in Wonderland section, like scarecrows. There could be a section entirely like making you feel like Scarecrow infected you with his fear toxin. Whoa. Oh, dude, that's amazing. I have separate attractions for most of these things. Me personally. too. This is why <laughs> yeah, I ran this into is the just Arkham Asylum. Well, wait, Harley Quinn's got to be in Arkham. So how am I going to have the Harley Quinn roller rink? So and, maybe one you know, way to do that is like, um, it's a specific area. Like maybe the entrance, you go through Arkham Asylum, so you get like the tour, and then before you exit, there's like a mass like breakout. So all the villains have just escaped. Like as soon as you got to the park, they just escaped. So that's why there's chaos and like. Cool. Batman and Robin are like running everywhere. You keep running into them because they're running all over the place trying to catch all these villains who just escaped at once. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, that could be like the inciting story. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about Batman being there, but what if there was a point where it's like, this villain's about to kill me, and then Batman comes in and saves you? Cool. So uh, the haunted house idea is a really cool idea, like a good matchup for the Arkham Asylum. And you could do like an escape room part of that, which I bring that up in like every single episode of my show because I'm like obsessed with escape rooms right now. But that could be pretty awesome. Um, or we could do like a, a fun house kind of thing as well for like Joker slash Riddler. Joker's um, fun house? Uh... Well, I kind of was thinking that Joker in a lot of the Batman comics or cartoons and stuff, Joker has an entire section of the town that's like an old amusement park that's his like Joker land. And I thought it'd be cool if we had that be an entire section of the park. So that's where the Ferris wheel is. How are you going to make a Ferris wheel Batman themed? Just make it seem like it's falling apart and it's in right. Joker's. It just has to look decrepit and like, yeah, I don't, I think that was from Batman, the animated series was I, where I'm really familiar with this. Like Joker has just moved into this, like kind of Disney's carousel of progress looking things with like animatronics that are like all busted. Yes. Really yes. Cool. yes. That's spooky. I love a that. hall of mirrors. That'd be so, and you could have a lot of like the, the food like stands there. Like just make that like a normal amusement park, but falling apart. And yeah. Scary. Absolutely. That's awesome. So it's kind of like part of this park looks much older, and that's the part that's, like, taken over by Riddler and, like, his his dudes. Well, wait, Joker. Oh, Joker. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't – I feel like Riddler, if he took something over, he'd, like – it'd be nice in, like, modern amenities. I feel like he's not as, as creepy. Riddler? Yeah. Now, maybe for Riddler, there could be – like a like almost like a, a trivia place like maybe like a like Riddler's bar you go to like play trivia play games and arcade oh that's cool and then you can add yeah, trivia night it'll be Batman themed trivia that sounds awesome right? I like that a lot and it it could just be riddles hidden throughout the park that maybe it's kind of like um you'll find these like hidden riddles and if you get that answer correct you get some kind of some kind of benefit I don't know. almost like a like there's this huge wide uh park filled scavenger hunt. Kind of. And you got to find the spots and send you to the next spot. And at the very end, if you made it all through the end, because they get harder and harder, uh, mm-hmm. you win some kind of prize because only a, they're like, <laughs> really, only a couple people are going to win this. Anyways, they're going to they're gonna bother yeah. finishing the whole thing. There's like 35 to 100 riddles. That sounds amazing. It would like take your full visit there. Like you've got to be like a diehard yeah. fan of that part. Yeah. You got to keep returning and trying it.
about? What other, uh, like, villains do you think deserve their own section? Um, well, I always thought, like, maybe uh, the Penguin is a really good guy. I thought maybe Ooh. in this park we could have... The Iceberg Lounge. The Iceberg Lounge, or also an exotic bird exhibit. Why not? Yeah. I mean, like, you know, put a little Bush Gardens, a little uh, Animal Kingdom in there, you know. Make that the Iceberg Lounge. That's Make where you that go to eat at the lounge. end of the day, yeah. and there's there's exotic birds. You get to walk around and look at the birds while you're waiting for your food. Yeah. Or we could we could do like a uh, kind of log flume like water coaster kind of ride that's like in the sewers like chasing after penguin or something like that. Killer Croc. Yeah, and Killer Croc as well and with the like reptiles. We could have a reptile area. So it's almost like we're building a little bit of a zoo into here. There's all these like exhibits featuring animals because a lot of Batman characters are animal based. I mean, he's Batman. And there's Man Bat too somewhere, you know. Yeah, Man Bat's scary. I like him a lot. <laughs> Man Bat's scary. Yeah. You know, scared the crap out of me playing uh, the the Arkham Knight. You know what I think would be really cool? Alongside the Arkham Asylum haunted house, what if there was like a sort of laser tag deal where a group of people went in at a time. You are the Suicide Squad. Whoa. The group that goes in there, you get your laser tag guns, and it's a Blackgate prison riot. So maybe Victor Zaz shows up, and just random prison people. Not so much Batman villains, except for maybe Victor Zaz. He's a serial killer, and he, he carves a, a tally mark into his skin for everybody he's killed. So, like, him, whoever else wouldn't be in Arkham could be there, and it's just, the idea is, you know, you're on a mission, take out the actors with their laser tag vests, you know, that are the prison prisoners. Yeah, that's awesome, and it could be, like, um, they could be just high-quality animatronics as well, so maybe it's, like, a, uh, a dark room ride where you're sitting, like, stationary in a cart that, like, puts you, pushes you through, and you just have to, like, shoot stuff around you. I say a mix of both. It could be a mix of both. I like that, because then it's, like, Maybe you're getting comfortable. You're like, okay, I, I get it. These are just animatronics. And then, like, a real guy, like, sneaks up behind you. That'd be really scary. Yeah. That sounds awesome. That's Yeah, I think cool. that actors bring so much to a, an amusement park, like, where you're used to just seeing animatronics and not interacting with anything in the, like, the lore or the world. Like, everything seems to be you're just watching it. But when it's a real actor, they can actually, like, take your actions into consideration, and it makes it a lot more, like, interactive. Yeah. I really like that idea. I do, too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, I mean. <laughs> <laughs>